Hello, hello. Sorry for the delay. We're doing butterflies today. Our scheme of colors is going to be white, yellow, blue, red, black. Um, if you don't want to do the traditional, well, I don't want to say traditional. If you don't want to do the kind of orange and yellow, reddish um, butterflies that are seen the most, you can actually change up your color arrangement however you'd like this is your butterfly so you can do really any kind of butterfly you want to do um i'm just going to show the basic principles of um how to do this so i made a mistake and i um did not make the wings identical to each other on my drawing here however on the example over there I kept it as close as possible. Um, the genealogy of the butterfly wings, they do actually uh, resemble each other. And they are identical um, because it's in the genes. So you definitely want to keep your butterfly wings the same unless you're going to do something that's more along the lines of graphic design or, um, you know, something more abstract. So it's totally up to you how you want to approach your butterfly. If you want to keep it abstract, do your thing. If you want to be uh, more real life, um, keep them identical, both sides of the wings, and um, or as close as possible. Um, but whatever colors you want to use, um, feel free to do that. I'm going to start with a very basic background, um, just something super, uh, super kind of muted in the background so that the butterfly can stand out but still still a nice background if you don't want to do a background and you like um what happened was i i wanted to have an example up while i was showing this so i didn't go all out on this piece of kind of shoebox cardboard that i have the butterfly on um i just did up a butterfly real fast so i could show it in it could be an example so um, if you like that, what I would suggest is color your background with just white. And um, you don't want to leave just plain canvas ever. You really want to cover every every stitch of it when it comes to acrylic. So, um, you know, cover everything in white. And then if you want to draw on your butterfly, you can draw it on. If you want to go from scratch, you can go from scratch. Um, I drew these both out before... I went in and painted them. So I would actually suggest that. But anyway, um, so we're going to do just a real basic background. And I'm going to take probably not my big brush, probably the one step down. This one right here. I'm going to mix up some yellows and greens with some blue and some yellow. And if you notice, I've, I've done this pretty much every video. It's It's rare that I actually use... The green out of the bottle because it's so much easier to mix the greens of your liking as opposed to um, just using it from the bottle and i think that you can get a lot more value out of your colors when you mix them but that's just my opinion so i'm just gonna go with something real light even add white to it something like in there and i like a a few different colors on the brush not just all the same one so I'll just dip it on, you know, yellows and greens and whites. And very lightly, I'm just going to work it in here. This doesn't have to have any rhyme or reason. It's just going to be a real light background. Very similar to the bee painting. If anybody recalls that, if you were there and you saw that. I'm just going to throw some colors in here. 
I don't really care that it makes up anything. I just want it to be present. If you want to add some water to that, give a little bit of a watery base. Follow your edges around with that too. Whatever's on the brush, I'm just gonna let it fall on the canvas. Even with some water, just let it glide over the canvas and become what it is. If you wanna challenge yourself and add, uh, maybe there's a leaf or something that the butterfly is standing on underneath it, around down here, you can do that. Um, I'm not going to do that with this one, but like I said, if you want to challenge yourself, you want to add some more things, feel free to add. Always feel free to add to your own piece, your own identi identity, I guess. It would kind of be of your own style. Maybe you see something in it that I don't see or I'm not adding. Always feel free to add. This is my technique where I call it the workaround. We're working around the butterfly. Like I said, I like to draw it out um, this way beforehand. It's more of a kind of a technical, more technical piece with um, the details of the butterfly and everything. So I drew it out and working around it. Typically, I don't like to work around the subject, but. Um, this is real forgiving where that if I hit it, um, it's okay because I'm going to end up covering it up later anyhow. And I'm taking it around the side, the edges here. Another thing I kind of like to do with um, these colors and the backgrounds and everything, uh, this one might actually match with that bee painting that I did. So, you know, if you're hanging all these up, um, you can actually coordinate, co <laughs> coordinate them. Uh, in a room, on a wall, and, you know, they'll go together. This, my bee painting actually went along with the Wizard of Oz painting really well. Um, they're hanging together, and, because uh, it's all the same colors being used, but in a different kind of scheme. But there were still brights and darks of greens and blues and yellows, and they all work together. So, I feel like this one might even go with them. Possibly. Mm -hmm. 
me make sure that I have all my sides covered over here. So I've been choosing these paintings based upon kind of what I hear everyone talking about um, around around the town. <laughs> um, yesterday with the squirrel was, you know, my cousin's idea. And um, I also was basing on what I see people kind of come into the studio and do a lot. Butterflies are definitely one of them. Owls are another. Um, anything nautical usually is, is really popular. So I've been um, choosing based upon what, what I've been hearing, feedback I've been given, um, what I see people kind of gravitate toward in the studio. Um, but I didn't want to just copy kind of things that I have there. I wanted to make some new pieces and um, give these as options as well. So always trying to keep it fresh. So if you have um, ideas or anything like that, always let me know in the comments or in a message or however. We're gonna take a trip away from the background now and hit this butterfly. So um, I've added to my plate the red, the brown, and I'm gonna add a little bit of black here. Now you can, um, actually I don't need the brown, but um, you can, like I said earlier, go accordingly to your butterfly colors, what you'd like to do. They could be purples, they could be blues, they could be pinks, they could be pretty much anything. And I'm gonna actually switch up from my sketch on this side of the wing I'm gonna keep everything over here, but I'm gonna to try to match everything here on this side. So I might switch it up a little bit. And I'll show a few different um, methods here. One method that you can do is cover the whole wing in black, which you don't have to do if you don't wanna cover up what everything that you've drawn. You don't have to do that. The other at the same time, if you don't want to use black, maybe you want to match that B if you use that maroon, you can make that maroon again. And um, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll make this maroon. I can make a nice maroon color. And it could take the place of the black. It's such a dark color, a dark tone. And it'll match the B if you're going to match, you know, the paintings that you've done prior to this. I think this might actually go in that same room, possibly. So I'll match my B with this maroon. But if you want to go with black, you can go with black. Um, whatever color sticks out to you. I might throw over here the black as an example of how you go about doing that. Um, even though the body's going to be a little different from... From the wings. I think this this real dark maroon is real nice against that lighter green. And it's a little bit of an exaggeration. I've I've never really seen. I'm not sure. They come in many different forms, butterflies. So maybe there have been some that have maroon wings but I've not come across them myself so I don't know if this is exaggerating or if this is a, a part of reality either way that's what I'm going with
once again make it your color make it whatever you feel you want your butterfly to show so i covered this whole wing and i let it dry and i come over top with the base coat and then the details in whatever color that i choose and then i'm going to be going like i said with what i did on the example with those colors but you can go with whatever colors you think work you could switch them up and do pink and blue or purple and blue or whatever it is that your butterfly wants to be I'm actually going to take this slightly darker. I still want it to be fairly dark. So I'm adding black in here because honestly with this, you can get away with more black. As it is a butterfly wing and all the colors that come from it are very bright. And I'm going to show the other method on the other wing of another way that you can paint this thoroughly through if you'd like. But what you could do is one of two things. You can either cover this whole wing in whatever you're going to do each of these in. If you're going to switch it up, I would do, you know, half and half. Maybe this will be blue down here and this will be purple up there. Um, whatever it is, I would either fill the whole wing or I would fill these individual spots and then later on come back in with your either black or your maroon or whatever it is that you're going to be using. That's one, uh, one way to keep everything in there real bright as well. It's because it's already white canvas, the colors aren't going to be messed with by that maroon. So let me mix... The weight that I got that color over there is I take the red and the yellow and I keep it really bright. I'm sorry, I'm still working on this super dirty plate. It's very rare that I actually switch them up, but let me add some more red to my plate here. So red, yellow, make sure there's no, no, nothing dark on your brush if you want to keep it really bright. There was something in my brush that was dark, so I'm going to mix another one in another spot to make it brighter. Yeah, that's better. All right. A little bit of red, a lot of yellow. To make an orange, something real bright, or whatever color that you're doing. If you want to mix blue and pink to make a nice purple, it's a good idea. If you want to make a lavender, you know, mix a purple and then add some white to it. Or if you have purple paint, add some white to it. So your your colors that you're gonna use. Some of these might require a few coats. This is going to require probably two coats or three. Just because you can still see through it really well. So I'm going to actually go through each individual one. If I go outside the lines, not really worried about it because I can tell where that's happening. I can go over them later. I like to show these methods because everybody paints differently. Everybody has their own method that works for them. And maybe there's one here that, you know, you find that I haven't shown. And that's your method. And it works for you. That's, you know, that's a part of painting. Not everyone's going to paint the exact same way. And not every way is going to work for every single person. So find your style. Know your brushes, know your paint, get to know them. I'm 
make sure you're you're having you know make sure you're enjoying the time while you're getting into your process on your journey of of doing painting it's a lot of work but it doesn't always have to feel like work Alright, so I filled all of those in. I'm gonna come in with a little bit bigger brush. I'm gonna use that maroon color I've been working with. Just work around it, bring it in. Take your time. Never, never rush a painting. That's one of the hardest things for me because I am always, you know, I'm so excited to get it out on the canvas and just, you know, throw it out there. But you got to be patient. When you're taking these shapes, make sure they're real nice and rounded. So it's almost like it's another layer of working around we worked around the butterfly now we're working around these designs and the wings working on the tip of the brush don't push it down too hard go a little darker here. I like the maroon, but I don't want it that maroon. There is pretty much a gap in between every one of these yellow designs going on. Make sure you're using brushes that you're comfortable with size-wise. You don't have to use the same size as I do. You can use smaller brushes if you feel like you want to use the smaller brushes. They're more comfortable to hold. Whatever works for you. And whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you know, I could mention a brush and it could be complete opposite of what helps you in your process. So get a brush that helps you. I don't expect anyone to mirror everything that I do when I paint, which is actually why I show so many different techniques and uh, ways to go
go about doing a painting. I've seen so many different artists do it so many different ways. And um, I've taken a lot from almost every single one. Different aspects, and I put together from them uh, the style that I like. It's pretty much how it works. You can follow these wings around the corners, around the edges if you'd like as well. As mine do go off the canvas there. But yours might not. You might have drawn it so it just fits in the canvas, which is also fine. So that is option number two of doing butterfly wings. And like I said, it will require a second coat inside of that yellow area. So you could have done that um, before doing the rest of the wing, or you can do that during, or I'm sorry, after. Wow, my colors are running into each other very much. We take some red over here. There we go. You can see how the second coat really brings it out. Very tip of the brush. I went to a smaller brush for these smaller details. Just hitting everyone as best as I can. They don't all have to be the same, you know. I like how this is lighter than some of these others, and it starts to go kind of in a pattern here. I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to actually hit that with yellow instead. And now for some of these kind of decorations on the wing. Um, all I do is I'll take white for, for, for sure on, on this one here and just dot. All different sizes, larger, smaller. I also like to throw in a couple just strange colors here, like red could go here. Can go over here randomly. Do a little bit of blue. I 
And maybe something's a little bit larger, like larger white kind of area here if you want. Maybe you put a shape to it. They have a lot going on on their wings. So before I come back over here, it's a little bit wet um, yet. So let's hit this body and the antennas. And what I did was I added a little bit of white to the black to make a dark gray. I kind of start by going in with that. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the same shade every time. Um, there's a lot of different shades when lighting hits a subject. So I kind of work with that. You know, if you want to go darker on the edges here, you can. To bring out some dimension in this butterfly. You can hit some white in the middle if you need. And just blend it in. It's totally up to you. If you don't want to put that much detail on your butterfly and you just want to keep it all black, that is up to you. I put some des designs up here, kind of in certain areas. There's little shapes and things. They have a lot going on. And the shapes down here. can still blend in some color if you like. Because I can kind of see um, the separation between the two, you can throw some shading ever so slightly over here where it's the separation of the body and the wing. I throw down a line along it, along the body, dry off the brush, just kind of Carry it from this, the edge of that out by brushing that in, scrubbing it in, scrubbing it out. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to do a little bit of a little bit of a dry brushing it out. So hopefully if you're doing this, you have gotten one of these brushes, real, real nice thin liner brush. It is perfect for doing the antennas. And I'm just gonna use the very tip of that brush, bring it up, and then curve it over. Same thing on the other side. Bring it up, curve it over. I 
And now let's look back at this other wing that we started. Now that it's dry, I'm actually going to put down a base coat that follows what's going on on that side. And I mentioned earlier, if you want to do something more abstract, you don't want to make it identical. This is your butterfly. But if you want to stick with the reality of the butterfly, their wings do match each other perfectly. I did some research on that to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Because it is in their genes. How their wings end up turning out. thinking I just did that backwards so let me make sure oh, I know what I'm doing here so this should have actually come down here a little bit and that's okay because I am going to run back through with some dark color over on that side this one's gonna come down here you notice I made a different direction here so I can see exactly where that is. A little small one over here. And then there's going to be these. A shape. Right in here. Maybe this one. So in here is going to be this shape right here. And so this doesn't confuse anybody. I'm going to go ahead and fix this now. This part requires some thinking. <laughs> which I've been trying not to do too much of lately. All right, and then we've got our shapes that are gonna come in here. So this one is long. Next one is kind of tear shaped. And we've got another tear shaped. All right, and if you want, you can go ahead and fill in those dots while these pieces are kind of drawing up here. Just dabbing these dots in. If you want to hit the reds and the blues again, definitely can. This one's going to be on the outside here. This one's going to be on the outside over here. Blue. If you want, you can uh, coat this a third time if it's not sticking out as bright as you'd like it. Yellow and orange and anything along those lines 
are pretty much going to take three coats or more, depending on your paint. I have really thin yellow, so it takes quite a few coats to actually brighten up. So if you saw my um, other, my last two videos, they have talked about um, staying, staying bright. So that was the seahorse and I believe the betta fish or the koi fish. Maybe the betta, betta fish went over a little bit as well, I can't remember, but um, definitely the koi fish and the seahorse, I talked about staying with your light colors if you are making something brighter. You don't want to enter into your dark colors while you're doing anything really bright. Um, it's kind of a given. However, when you're actually sitting in front of your palette and you're thinking, what do I need to blend to make what happen? You never blend dark colors into your bright colors to make anything bright it might feel like a blue is bright enough to do it i wouldn't do it those blue is along the cool colors reds and yellows are along the warm colors so you want to stay in the warm the warm is gonna help you stay bright but the blues and the greens and the the cool color, they're, they're all going to take you down. And then you're going to be fighting the canvas for a while, um, trying to brighten it back up, and it's not really going to ever reach that peak as, as you wish. So, um, unless you base coat it a lot of times with white and then go back over. Like it's, a, it's quite a process, so if you're thinking bright, stay with your warm, bright colors. Reds, yellows, orange. Now I'm going to get this side started. For now, I'm just sticking in the yellow. Um, it is the brightest. Didn't mean to hit that one. So I'll just do that real fast over here, too. Sometimes these are actually kind of wanted something different from white anyway on that corner. <clears throat> so there's a brighter yellow. Totally up to you how you're doing your butterfly. If you wanted to coat this white again before you go in your colors, you can do that. But I'm going to go ahead and layer these colors on. These wings are pretty forgiving because any adjustments you need to make, all you need to do is, you know, cover with the dark color again. It's going to take over as it should. Um, but at the same time, I am being careful with these bright colors. Since we have some specific shapes that are kind of happening. If 
if it helps, you can rest your hand. If you know if it's dry up here, take your pinky. It helps you actually direct these other four uh, four fingers um, a little easier. So it's a little tip for if you're doing details, you can put your pinky out like you're drinking tea, real fancy, and you just paint everything inside. Rest it on there if you need. It'll help you guide your brush. And once you've done it enough, you'll actually be able to just keep your pinky in and just go ahead and paint. So it's it's kind of training your, your hand muscles to work and cooperate with exactly what you're trying to do. See it in your mind, but your hand won't understand. It won't have that muscle memory to, to do what you're trying to do unless you train it. I got my two base coats here. I got my white, got my yellow. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. And let me show you real fast what we're gonna be working on tomorrow is an owl. Um, this is, this is actually my kind of example that I'm gonna go by while I'm teaching. But I did this up yesterday real fast. And if you wanted to pre-draw this out on a canvas, I do have one done. Let me try to get this so everyone can see it a little easier. Yeah. There it is. All right, so he's standing on kind of a stump, a wooden stump or a wooden pole of some sort. And uh, he's not taking up over the entire canvas. I, I want to do a real cool kind of watercolor background or an idea of a watercolor. It's, it's still going to be acrylic, but it's going to be um, kind of something I show a lot of people when they want to go more watercolor-ish. Uh, very similar to what we do with the butterfly in the background, but a little bit more... Um, more details on adding the water to it. So I'll be showing that tomorrow and then we're going to paint this guy up. It's not as difficult as it might look um, to get to get this done. It's just a lot of real simple brush strokes. So the owl is tomorrow. I'm super excited about that. While I'm waiting for this to dry, I'll let you, if you are following along, go ahead and um, you know, continue to do your work on your butterfly. I try not to be too fast with this. Sometimes it takes a little more time. I see a little spot in here that I want to hit real fast. If you feel like it, you can even come down around the butterfly and put a little bit of a shadow down here. Maybe it's resting over over something. I'm just going to do it on one side. I don't want it on every side. We're actually going to dry brush that out. So just scrub it out as far as it'll go. Leave a little bit of a shadow from from the butterfly. The reason I don't do black is because it is over top of a green background. And more so than anything, it's going to get, you're going to see the darker hue of the green than you're going to see of 
it going super dark like black, but you can can go a little bit darker if you like when it comes to right under the wing here. So right over here, darker version of green than what we just put down. It's gonna give it a lot more dimension. It's gonna pop out of the canvas even more so. We can continue this a little, a little ways. I don't want to overdo it, so I'm not going to do this side of the wing. Really just this side over here. Maybe it's closer there than it is over here. If you wanted to come back into the body and add a little bit more of this darkness, you can. If you like things where they are at any point and I'm showing to do something further and you don't feel uh, that you want to do that, don't ever feel obligated to do it. Definitely, wherever it's telling you to stop and you don't want to go further, let that be your answer. Let that be what you do. There's never any pressure to do more than... There's a lot of people that come up with something they like, and then I'll take it further online, and um, they wouldn't be happy with that step. So I don't, I don't encourage to do a step you don't want to do that I might be showing that you're not feeling. So whatever that you like and you want to keep, make sure that you keep it. Make sure you don't don't feel obligated to ever go further with it. So I'm going to start incorporating my orange, a little bit of red and the yellow. I'm going to start bringing it onto these veins. It's always more than one road, more than one pathway to your destination on a painting. So I really like showing different ways you can achieve your goal. A lot of people think that you have to stick to one exact way, but it's a lot like in life. There's a lot of different doorways that you can take to get to a destination. Same thing goes with painting. A lot of different techniques you can use that you find that work for you to make your painting work the way it needs to. So I always encourage, you know, explore with your, your brushes and your paint and get to know them and understand the way they work so that you can get right into your process and what helps you achieve your goals on your piece. I think after this one, I'm just going to do one more. 
one more to make the sides match a little bit more. I'm going to throw a little bit more red into my orange mixture. So I can actually see a lot of red kind of coming through here, even though it's mostly orange. This looks like a flame to me with some reds on the sides and yellows and oranges coming through. So I'm going to I'm going to throw some a little bit of red in here and maybe toss it in. Yeah. too the more you work with your paint the more you're going to see what color is where and you're going to be able to determine how you came about making something happen so like my my eye completely divided all these colors where they are and i saw reds and i saw yellows and i saw oranges um that comes to you the more that you work with your paints and see, you know, what you put where. I might come back in with a little bit of yellow up here. Something to do when, when you are trying to go dark and you don't feel like you're up attaining the dark then you take a light color take something light and and put it disperse it around that dark it'll take it darker and it'll take the bright brighter instead of trying to mix a color over and over and over again and trying to get it brighter, trying to get it brighter. Just look at your piece. Um, notice that the dark and the light are kind of um, along the same plane. And take your... Whichever one's giving you the trouble, go to the other. You know, if the, if the dark's giving you trouble, go to the lighter and make it lighter. If the light's giving you trouble, go to the dark and make it darker. This is also a good point actually too. You can see that this side's a little brighter than that side over there. Um, this base coat of white, when I was saying to cover your whole canvas in white uh, beforehand, that coat of white will also bring out the color more so on the canvas itself. Um, it's almost like a ceramic. If, if you've seen a ceramic, they're a little bit off-white. Um, and then when you paint them, um, you know, the color is on there. If you were to cover them in a brighter white, I have a brighter white in my studio that people will kind of base coat the entire piece first and then uh, paint over top of that and the colors come out a bit brighter. So when you have something off white and you just put a color on it, um, if you base coat that with a white, just like we did on this wing, it might come out a little bit brighter. Um, it might be hard to notice. Uh, sometimes you have to be right up on it, you know, in person, but um, I can definitely tell the difference between this side and this side uh, distinctively. But, um, you know, that, that makes a huge difference. If you put down a, a, a base coat, it will bring out those colors more. So, we got our butterfly on here. We got all these things covered. Um, if anybody has any questions, please let me know. Make sure you do all your edges of your painting and make sure you sign it in the bottom right corner whatever color that you like I think I'm gonna go with this orange that I made just your first and last initials or if you have a signature thing that you do do that and thank you again for watching and I will be back tomorrow with the owl um, 
and if anybody wants to prep a canvas beforehand with the owl, um, the drawings are on here, and they are on a status earlier in the week. Um, but it's going to be a fun time. So thank you so much, and I will see you then.